Hello Cinnamon Bun! Welcome to the first video in my series on CBT or Cognitive Behavioural Therapy. I'm really excited to start this series even though it's really big, it's going to get quite personal at points and it's not actually about writing, it's about mental health. But first, a quick disclaimer. I am not a therapist, I am not a medical professional, this is not medical advice and you should never take my word over a doctor's. With this series I intend to share my experiences with cognitive behavioural therapy and what I have taken away from it. So what is CBT? What do those words mean or letters? What does cognitive behavioural therapy mean? Well, CBT is a toolbox of techniques designed to manage your mental health and um, specifically around depression and anxiety. The tools are built from and fit into a psychological model about how depression and anxiety come about, how they manifest and how they are perpetuated, and that model is called the Cognitive Behavioural Model, or the CB model. And this model is designed to explain the kind of factors which go into your mental health or mental illness and how they're related. It sounds a bit technical at the moment, but hopefully it will start to make sense. This is definitely not just going to be a list of my symptoms and um, dealing with depression and anxiety. Um, if you would like me to go into more detail on like my history and stuff, if you want another video on that then let me know, um, but that's not what this series is going to be. But I will be using personal examples and stuff to try and illustrate some of the points here. But just to give you the gist, I personally have gone through two major periods of mental illness in my life. A few years of major depression and then a few years of significant anxiety. My experience is slightly odd in that I experienced depression and then I got better and then I had anxiety and then I got better. Um, but a lot of people um, experience these at the same time um, and have overlapping experiences with depression and anxiety. It can be really hard to quantify um, the severity, in inverted commas, of uh, mental illness between people and it's really important to remember it's not a competition. <laughs> One of the therapists from the CBT course that I did explained that you know some people have really severe mental illnesses but are very good at managing them and some people have comparatively mild mental illnesses and but aren't very good at managing them or not good in particular ways and stuff so trying to quantify um, exactly how ill someone is is very difficult. So when I say that my periods of mental illness were severe, or that I would categorise them as severe, um, I also know that, that it's, a, it's a tricky concept and it's hard to know exactly what that means for a lot of people. What I mean by that is that they had a huge impact on my life, um, my, affected what I was capable of, and um, I changed my lifestyle basically to cope with it. So during the period in which anxiety was basically dictating my life, um, I finally reached out for professional help. I referred myself to a mental health services team in my area and I had to wait quite a long time to get a consultation call. Once I got that consultation call, they told me, um, they recommended basically that I do this cognitive behavioural therapy course. It was a group course, so it wasn't one-on-one -on -one, um, therapy. And I did. Um, I actually really wanted to speak to someone one-to-one, -one, but I knew that the waiting list for that was going to be huge, so I thought, it can't hurt to do this. And it's not like I started this course and I started using the techniques and suddenly everything was magically better. The course was run by a couple of different therapists and I actually really didn't get on with one of them, but I still think it was a really valuable thing for me to do and a lot of the stuff that I learned there did eventually snowball into helping me recover. And it may sound like a cliche, but um, the first step to um, dealing with the problem is understanding it and CBT, even though it didn't immediately help me solve everything, it helped me understand what my problems were. When I took the CBT course, I was really caught in the cycle of panic attacks and hyperventilation spirals, which could last for a week straight. Um, it had been over a year, possibly closer to two years that I'd been dealing with that. I actually even ended up in accident and emergency twice with really severe chest pain and you know close to fainting and stuff and um, no doctors at the time diagnosed it as hyperventilation syndrome but that's what it was and that syndrome was entirely caused by anxiety. I'm really pleased to say that I haven't had a panic attack in months, possibly over a year now. Um, I haven't fallen into a hyperventilation spiral um, in ages and it's not like my mental health is perfect now but um, it doesn't rule my life in the same way that it did and it's, it's a relief. And now I just want to briefly talk about 
um, the phrase mental illness and talk about the stigma around mental health and illness. One thing I noticed in my CBT course was that no one ever used the phrase mental illness. Um, people spoke specifically about depression and anxiety and mental health problems. And to me, this it seemed really clear that this was because there is still such a stigma around the phrase mental illness. And um, to be honest, I still find it strange to use that phrase myself about myself. But while I think it's okay to not be okay using the phrase mental illness to refer to yourself or other people, um, it's still good to acknowledge why that is. Before I really learned more about mental health, what mental illness meant to me was some kind of genetic defect in your brain that you can't escape and it just makes you broken and it makes you crazy. And when I was in the darkest depths of my own mental illness, I definitely felt broken. I felt like I was never going to get better. I felt like I was going to be that way forever and I would never find out why. And I just thought there was something fundamentally wrong with me and it was never going to get fixed. And that was a lie. <laughs> And I think a lot of people when they're dealing with mental health issues feel that way um, and it is a lie that's not what mental illness is. In reality depression and anxiety in particular are illnesses but they're illnesses in the same way that colds and flus are illnesses. A lot of people get them sometimes and um, they can be to do with fa various factors to do with you but also your environment and they can be totally temporary. They can just get better on their own, but there are also things that you can do which will help them get better and which also will make it worse. When you get the flu, you don't beat yourself up about it. You don't consider there to be something fundamentally wrong with you because you got the flu. Even if you're frustrated with being ill and you're frustrated maybe at the timing or that you're not getting to work and as someone who literally just had the flu, I can, I can attest to this, but it's not your fault for getting the flu. And of course, depression and anxiety aren't the only kinds of mental illness. There are many different kinds and they function in all sorts of different ways. Some of them can be much more longer term and um, almost more like a chronic illness. And some of them do have genetic factors. But it is a myth that you are born a depressed or anxious person and that that's who you'll always be. Your mental health is not a static thing and it's not your personality. So the first week of my CBT course covered the CB model and some goal setting stuff. So I'm just gonna run over that quickly here. So the therapist encouraged us to think about where we want to be in relation to where we are now, where we were then. And they advocated setting goals because people who set goals are more likely to achieve them. And an important part of making changes is being able to evaluate those changes. So you may have heard of this SMART goal setting guide before. Um, it just means that you should try and set goals which are specific, measurable, achievable. And this one is hard with mental illness because it skews your idea of what is achievable. It should be resourced, which means do you have the resources to achieve this goal? Is there a way that you could acquire those resources? And time limited. And again, with mental illness, this can be hard to set times on recovery. It's very easy to think my goal is to not be mentally ill anymore and that to seem completely overwhelming and impossible. And I think it's really important to try and start small. Things won't change overnight, but that definitely doesn't mean they're not worth doing. So try to come up with a few short-term and long-term goals for your mental health. So what would be different in your life if your mental health improved significantly? What differences would you notice in yourself and what differences would other people notice in you? If you want to, you can pause it here so that you can write your own goals now. So now I'm going to tell you the goals that I wrote down in that first session of CBT. It's a little bit personal, but we're just going to do it. <laughs> so my midterm goals were to be comfortable and relaxed while on the bus or traveling, to feel like I'm prepared for situations where I might start to have an anxiety attack, and to be able to wear a bra every day without it aggravating my anxiety. Um, my long-term goals were to be able to drink coffee again in moderation without experiencing sensory overload and panic attacks. Um, and this is this is actually the first time I've looked at these goals um, since I did CBT and I've actually achieved all of these. Like, it's kind of insane. Um, like, your path is not my path, my path is not your path, but I swear, when I made these goals, I 
I thought most of them were impossible. Like I was in a really bad place. Um, I couldn't even imagine actually achieving those things. It just seemed, it just seemed crazy. Um, and here we are. Like it, it's not like it was an overnight thing, but um, I, I've achieved all of those things. Um, change is possible. Okay, so that's it for this instalment of the series. Um, I hope that you found it a good introduction. Um, subscribe if you don't want to miss the rest of the series for sure. And yeah, I'll talk to you in the comments. As always, I'm Rachel Stephen, novelist, YouTuber with The Hell Pitch, and I'll see you next time. Take care of yourself. In the phrase, blah, 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 get why do you bother doing anything? Just get better on a couple of different. Just quickly first though, a quick, just quickly first though, a quick something. Have you heard it's gonna be quick? I hear, I hear that it's gonna be quick, guys.